I think he probably, I don't think he did that on purpose, but um, he probably did a little bit of a slowdown knowing that Van der Haar was there because then you can actually get a bigger gap again as well. Swait's got to come back, Van der Bosch, Kevin Koenig, Gervin Kuypers, look at the way Ailey Isabet now is just digging into this course as Michael Van Toren out, that little uh, scuff of the back wheel from Van der Haar to Isabet, but Van der Haar, look at the power and the speed Van der Haar carries into the sand that allows him to come back to Isabet. Here's he getting, it makes it really they high. They are close, they are close now. Someone's going to ride that for sure. Oh. Little momentary pause there, but Ailey Isabet attacking every section of this course. Three laps to go, they'll see two to go when they come round next time. Right on the limit here, you can see just how the smallest, minutest of mistakes is putting gaps into the leading row that was together. And you can feel the fatigue <laughs> as a rider's try and power over the oh, top. Oh, come on. <laughs> Uh, yeah, last, last year's that opportunity. Everybody's making mistakes, and there is a bit was trying to ride it. He knew he'd been able to ride it, but he wasn't quite capable of that time. But he got caught up in the tape because he was coming so close on that line. Um, and Van der Haar's like, right, I'm going round here. I've already committed to what I'm doing, and I know that that's going to work every time. So they want it. These three want it. They do. There's Laurent Swake. Gerben Kuypers has ridden into this race today. He did say he was going to do that in his pre-race interview. Didn't look like, didn't look a happy bunny early on, did he? Wasn't enjoying this race, but he's back. He's in that group now. Is Gerben Kuypers behind Van der Haar and Issa Bit at the front on a course such as this? Two quite evenly matched riders in terms of the sort of the way they sort of dig into a course, the sort of low, as a sort of slightly smaller rider than Michael Van Turen out, that lower center of gravity as well. They are much, uh, definitely smaller than Michael Van Turen out height wise. Um, and there are some advantages. We're gonna watch this again. So Isabel is going around that corner, but he, yeah, his back wheel just slides down into the post, but Van der Haard already committed to running, so he was just straight round, straight on, and back down again in the front. Going through at the end of the lap, Lars Van der Haar leads through. Uh, he's not letting up though, 48.29 is our race time so far. There's been no pause from that leading group. The clock is ticking to Swait, Koypers, Van den Bos. Nine seconds is the gap. Then Kevin Kuhn, Felipe Orts, Cameron Mason going through at 14 seconds. Joram Vissura not far away. So lap eight of nine, two laps to go. It looks like it could, it looks like it could come down to this front group. And Van der Haar's going a lot on the front at this point. I feel like he should probably let the others have a go, but maybe he's just thinking, keep the pressure on, keep the pressure on, and when there'll be three of us to actually race out for the win. And in this situation, is it for, for Lars Van der Haar, although he's got the two Power Sales and Bingo riders together, who we know historically ride tactically together. We've seen them do it so many times. For Van der Haar, because of the way this course is riding, the, the possibilities for those errors, the way, and just pressing on, take the banks, take your own lines, and just dictate everything ar around you and not allow Kuipers, Swake, and Van der Bos to come back. Yes, absolutely. If you're at the front of the race, you're in control, particularly in the technical sections, you're in control of what lines you take, you're in control of everything um, everything around you. If you make a mistake, it's the people behind that suffer as well as you. If you make a mistake in second wheel, nobody is affected in front. So, yeah, leading in the technical sections is one of the most important parts of a course like this. Um, on the faster sections, it doesn't really matter who leads because as long as you can jump around before and get into those technical sections first, then you'll still get the advantage. And that's the thing, in, if anyone's tuning in that's new to cyclocross, and if you are, welcome along. Uh, it's different from that perspective to, to ride in the road where we're always like sit in the slipstream, sit in the wheel. Very, very different to road racing. It's way more fun. Um, and <laughs> best sport on earth. Best sport on earth. It's actually... In road racing, because of the the way that you want to save all your energy for the finish, whereas in cyclocross, you quite often want to use your energy early on. You want to use it during the middle of the race. It's very rare that you need to save that much for the finish because you've normally created the race 
before that. We have seen a lot of races recently when it's come to sprint finishes, which have been very, very exciting. Um, and you have required that, but it's very rare that first place is determined by a sprint finish. Gerben Kuypers. This is why the cameras were focusing on Gerben Kuypers a little bit uh, throughout the race today. He's with Laurens uh, Swake, the 23-year-old uh, Belgian. He's had a couple of wins so far this season. He won the Kermis Cross in Ardoy. Lars van der Haar, as I said, he won the, the Nachman Vorden in the week. The, uh, the the cheese rate always oh, a, a little mistake there wasn't quite able to make that corner and as we've seen at other few riders there's no point in jumping back on to jump back off for this just this one section so he just carried on running at that point and that remount there it's uh it's quite a tricky one look how it's, deep this is now becoming it's really deep on that corner and they don't have their feet in quite yet because they're focused on getting down the descent and having to put your feet in in all those conditions we're going to watch it again yeah you just hit the tape but that was fine jumped off carried on but it's the next section and then i'm going to show it again where he came into that deep mud that you find that because he doesn't have his feet in sometimes you can make one mistake and it just accumulates into six or seven mistakes because you haven't quite corrected yourself and refocused before the next one into the pits van turn goes from belgian champion bike to european champions bike he's fixed some fresh bike he just looked down at his gears when he slid into the uh, the barrier at the side. Sweet. That, that bike change, as you were saying Super earlier fast. on, lightning quick. Nice one from Cameron Mason. Felipe Orts moves uh, up and turn out Van der Haar. Just got to be careful. Get, we saw that little uh, stuck the way on some of these banks. It's how quickly someone comes back to you sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes, uh, yeah, if you're not in the right gear or something like that, then yeah, it could be a. You could slow down just a little bit too much and then that person doesn't quite have the power to come around. But I would have thought Van der Haar would have kept the lead coming into this sandpit because he was actually really good and really strong on this sandpit in the last couple of laps. So it's interesting that Van Tornout managed to get around him quite easily. Devin Kuypers has got that group in his sights. Michael Van Tornout, Lars Van der Haar. Van Tornout almost to the top there. Little dab and a press along there for Michael Van Turen out. Nearly there. Means he's still on the bike and the uh, remount. Here we go. Here's Sweet. There. Oh, oh dab. I almost, <laughs> I almost, I almost got the commentary box, uh, the commentary box bet there from Swake. He's almost there. Come on, Lawrence, bring it home for me. <laughs> I don't know they necessarily will now because he's not in the position to win at this point in the race. So, would you expand all that energy? to take fifth place when He'll, you've got a World Cup tomorrow. He's hearing me. He'll do it for me. <laughs> Kevin Cooney still having a good day out. Uh, Lars van der Haar, early dismount, not even thinking about riding that section now, van der Haar. It makes total sense because, sure, if you make it, then you have a slight advantage, but if you don't make it, you really lose everything. and You've still got a lap to go. Um, so there's always next lap to try and just get into that sandpit first to try and... Being consistent on a course like this, consistently tough, consistently out of the corner, out of the saddle, consistently strong up every hill, will give you the advantage in the long run. Because I'm you'll make the people behind you make mistakes, and you'll also keep applying so much pressure that they can't keep coming back all the time. That was a really unusual one there for, for Van Toren out on that straight. This is his straight as well. Yeah. This is the one where he's been super strong on all the other laps. That's like Michael Van Turnout Street on this course, <laughs> isn't it? It'll be a, there'll be a sign outside the beer tent next year. We just have a little replay into the sand, almost making it to the top. Michael Van Turnout, little a couple of little skips. We've got a couple of friends that we've picked up on the camera. There's a bit of sand, I think, on the, on the lens. Gavin Kuypers, Laurent Swake, and then Kuypers' teammate, Kim Coombe, behind him into the start finish straight and uh, Lars van der Haar will come round and get the bell this time the Balwater Trek Lion Rider is not letting up he's making any is of it and Michael Van Turen out have to fight to get back to him and the battle for fourth Swain and then the two circus riders Gladwell Poypers Kem Kuhn go through then Cam Mason on the front of that chasing group behind. 
He's really making Issa Bet and Van Turen out hurt here. Like and this Banner. is really, really good because, like I said on this course, you need to make them hurt. You need to make them make mistakes. You need to apply the pressure all the time. And they'll be the ones making the mistakes and you just ride away again. Can Swake on this final lap? Is there anything? There's a, it is a decent-ish gap to get back in there. Gerben Kuipers takes a, a fresh bike. This has been a real power-heavy course today. The chasing group is down to Swake. And Kevin Kuhn with Gerben Kuipers having to really bury himself to get back on. That real concrete drainage ditch that they now drop in on uh, this course. This is going to come down to just the finite details, this course, isn't it? This is one small error uh, that could hand someone 10 metres that could grow to 20. This is going to come down to mistakes, absolutely. Um, everybody seems to be pretty matched in power, and it's just as to who's actually riding over their limits and is incapable of making good choices when their heart rate's so high and their brain's not focused. So, yeah, it's it's definitely a mistake-driven victory, but you know that. That's why you, why, why Lars van der Haar is applying all of this pressure at the front of the race right now and has been for the last lap and a half. And Lars van der Haar, winner of the Telenet Super Prestige Series uh, last year, perhaps feels that this is the series that he wants to... Uh, perhaps focus on as well you never know but he allowed he a bit to come through to the front there into uh, this section of the course he did and i'm not sure if that's again part of the tactic make is a bit make a mistake by thinking that he's gonna go harder and crash i mean we saw what happened to nice in over eyes last weekend smoothly through there and hard back on but we know Lars as well just you can see how deep these ruts are getting at the bottom they've got to watch that little bit of string there into the steps got to be careful on the steps east of it grabs the bike swiftly up Van der Haar is as well the sort of railway big railway sleepers those uh, those steps is it now between these two Van Toren out from me don't know what you think is he looking uh, just slightly more fatigued than the other two I think he might be he seemed the stronger the whole race but is a bit obviously wasn't putting in the same level of effort He's going to try and ride up this thing again. Oh, that, that's made the gap. That might be it for Isabit van der Haar. And you can see the gap opening being roared on by the side. Is that the race winning move now for Eli Isabit? He managed to just make it over the top of that bank. Michael van Turen out. That mistake might be costly for him. He's a bit, look at the advantage that he's now managed to open up here. He looks back at Lars van der Haar. Van der Haar's got anything left now. He's got to absolutely bury himself. But Ailey is a bit attacking this final lap as uh, Menepetigin, the team manager, roars him on from the side. Yeah, that was a really good move there that by Isabel. He knew he was capable of riding it, and he did. And Van der Haar obviously knew that it's risky, and so he'd run, but the gap that you're able to get, and then he was able to just apply the pressure again. So clearly he has been saving himself until this point of the race. It's been interesting watching him tactically today and uh, how he's approached this one. And he re with World Cup tomorrow, uh, as you said, he's not gone really hard until he really needed to today and this is where Ailey Isabit starts to come into his own the way he rides he's all as you are as a cross rider you're always three sections ahead of yourself almost aren't you yeah he's very good at stuff like that and he's um, got a good jump and things like that so he is capable of these short punchy efforts um, but he has literally saved himself compared to some of the other riders you haven't seen him on the front you've seen him close gaps but you haven't seen him pressure the front of the race um, and until now but Van der Haar's going to try and ride this. Oh Lars van der Haar manages to make up a, a fraction maybe a second or so by riding a little bit further than Issa bit and he uh, glances over Lars van der Haar just trying to use the sections of the course that really suit his skill set as well. Issa bit has got to be careful there's got to be no mistakes or Lars van der Haar could be back with him. He is going so hard at this point. We never really see him look like this, and he really, really wants this race win. Michael Van Turen out. Is he resigned to a podium? 
east of it, just catches his bike there, Van der Haar running, it's still close, there's still an opportunity here for Lars Van der Haar if there's any mistakes for Ailey Isabet at the front, Van Turenhout's got to watch that podium position with the chase behind him. Isabet accelerates into the into the jumps here. Van der Haar's been hopping well today, carries good speed over the top of there for the Balwaza Trek Lions rider. They are they're going neck and neck at this uh, the effort level. You can see that bunny hopping is actually getting tiring at this point. This is the section for Michael Van Turenhout straight. This could be where, no, Lars isn't able to put that effort in to come back at this point. Just trying to carry some momentum. East a bit has got good power and has had throughout the race on these uh, sections. Into the big whoops. As East a bit over the top, he's glancing back over his shoulder. Van der Haar's keeping piling the pressure on East a bit. He was just trying to force any kind of error from the Palsals and Bingo rider ahead of him because he, he, he's a bit when he's looking back he knows Van der Haar will know that he's still got him rumble but it's not going to be enough today he's a bit is going to come home for his 41st career pro win for Palsals and Bingo and he delivers in the route of order what a race, what a battle. Lars van der Haar has to settle for second spot, but what a race he gave us today. Michael van Turnout rounds out your podium ahead of Kevin Kuhn with uh, looks like Lauren Swick uh, coming home behind. And then you got Gerber Koypers, and it's going to be sixth place for Felipe Orts and another really good uh, ride from Niels van der Putter at Joram Vitsura and then uh, Cameron Mason behind to van der Putter in eighth. And it's going to be an 11th spot. No, 10th place for Cameron Mason. So the British champion takes 10th. What a race. That, that was yeah. absolutely nuts. That was it? a brilliant, smart race by Isabet there. He, we really didn't have him as one of the... He wasn't showing his strength, so we didn't...